In law school, I'd always wanted to do civil rights work, um, but in law school, I never could have dreamed about being in the position that I'm in now, um, where I get to work on so many critical areas of civil rights and human rights work um, that's both on the cutting edge and serving really um, um, important communities in need. After law school, I, I clerked in the Court of Appeals in Philadelphia, then was in private practice for about a year and a half, and then became a clinical law professor at Seton Hall Law School, uh, where I worked on um, worked with third-year law students on um, public interest cases, immigrants' rights, prisoners' rights cases, uh, and then eventually started working on Guantanamo and other kind of national security issues. Back when I started getting involved in Guantanamo, the Center for Constitutional Rights, where I work now, had been the original organization uh, and, and practically the only one who dared take on the Bush administration and represent individuals in Guantanamo. Um, and soon after they won um, a Supreme Court victory uh, in the Rasul versus Bush case in 2004, CCR started looking for lawyers to represent individuals who CCR happened to know were in Guantanamo, and at that point it was only a small handful, through just kind of connections with CCR lawyers, they asked me if I wanted to represent one individual, a uh, Turkish-German individual named Murat Kurnaz. Um, I didn't represent him, and that was a transformative experience. I was the third uh, civilian lawyer to go to Guantanamo, and it was um, an incredibly intimidating experience. Um, the contrast between um, the, the, the brutal detention conditions and the profound humanity and connection I had with my client. He, like so many of Guantanamo detainees who've been released or are still there, uh, was simply in the wrong place and the wrong time. The case against him was factually preposterous and we were able to put enough pressure on his home government, the German government, to start negotiating for his release which they uh, finally started doing in um, 2006, and he was released uh, in August of 2006, uh, almost six years ago. So we're, you know, as of this taping, we're entering about the 100th day of the hunger strike, um, and the detainees are um, suffering the consequences, the physical and psychological consequences associated with this kind of starvation. A number of them have lost 30 to 40 to 50 pounds. Um, and at the same time, we notice a kind of resiliency and a, and, a, and a buoyancy because they are doing something. President Obama has, has tended to blame other political actors for the predicament in Guantanamo and for his failed promise to close it. But what is clear is that he has all of the power he needs to close the prison. There are currently 86 men. Over half of the men that are there have been cleared unanimously for release. Um, so he's fully invested with the authority to do so. Um, and f we hope finally he'll start acting on the commitment he's made a long time ago. Otherwise, he will own this legacy as much as George Bush. The work that everyone is doing here is so Im important. Um, not just Guantanamo work, but international human rights work and domestic civil rights work. So we're involved in one of the most historic civil rights trials in the city, probably in the country. It's an eight-week trial against the New York Police Department called Floyd versus City of New York, which challenges a long pattern and practice of unconstitutional and ultimately race-based stop and frisks of individuals in primarily brown and black communities in New York. Um, and as I say, this promises to um, create a significant change in the way the NYPD undertakes its policing um, or has undertaken its policing in the past decade. 
what's satisfying about it is um, working with the, the clients and partners that we work with um, who are so committed to the, the, the causes and changing um, the, the, the political and, and social landscape in which they, they live, like the massive coalition of community groups who is united for change against the NYPD. Um, or uh, LGBT groups who are challenging persecution in Uganda and re really taking these enormous risks to challenge individuals who are persecuting them. Um, or, or, or Guantanamo detainees who are you know, finally standing up in the, this form of peaceful protest through a hunger strike. I think it's, it's, a, it's an incredible honor to work with those who are most affected and also most committed to social change.